Hey everyone, today I thought we'd look through the iridescent add-ons of each killer and discuss the meaning and story behind them. Let's get into it. Pretty much every single add-on with iridescent at the start is simply a gift from the entity to the killer, or in some cases is meant to be a form of mockery. This includes the iridescent stone, iridescent king and queen, iridescent head, iridescent button, iridescent seal, iridescent family crest, iridescent coin, Iridescent photo card, iridescent blight tag, iridescent pendant, iridescent lament configuration, and the iridescent feather. So let's go through these first. <laughs> The iridescent stone is described as a sharpening tool, and is likely made of the fog, like most of the other iridescent implements, allowing Trapper to sharpen his bear traps, upon doing so, providing them a life of their own. So a gift, I assume. The iridescent king and queen are two chess pieces moulded from the fog itself, that seem to be charged with a high concentration of electricity. These both seem to be gifts, playing into Doctor's ego by emphasising both his intelligence and the appreciation for his shock therapy, inviting him to embrace madness. Iridescent Head is simply a powerful hatchet head, moulded from the fog itself, a gift. Iridescent Button is a legion pin, moulded from the fog itself. The pin itself is actually the legion mask wrapped in the entity's claws. So possibly this is a gift, but also a threat, showing the power the entity holds over the legion, reminding them to obey it, but still offering power in return. The flavour text somewhat reinforces this idea, mentioning the entity consuming the youth of the legion to give the button power. The iridescent seal is an effigy of the plague, moulded from the fog with small entity claws on it. This seems to be a gift, likely for Adiris' loyalty to the entity. The iridescent family crest features the Yamaoka crest. This may be both to compel Oni, reminding him of his family, which was the reason for his killing spree to begin with. On the other hand, the crest, made iridescent, could be to mock Kazan, reminding him of what he destroyed. It's iridescent and perfected, but in reality, destroyed, likely fueling him with anger. The iridescent coin is a coin moulded from the fog, and appears to simply be a gift, or more so, a payment from the entity to the Deathslinger. It's stated to be a payment to the bounty hunter for the services rendered, so it's like quite literally his reward for serving the entity. The iridescent photo card is simply a gift, being a glass-like photo moulded from the fog. It's a bit of an ego boost for Trickster from the entity. The iridescent blight tag is straight up stated to either be a gift or a thing to mock the blight, the entity tagging him like he tagged the other killers in the realm. It may even be a thing from the entity saying, hey, yeah, you managed to overpower the other killers and put your tags on them, but remember I'm stronger than you. Then it tags him. The iridescent pendant is a pendant moulded from the fog itself. Inside it has a portrait of the twin's mother, Madeline. It states, however, that something about her depiction is unsettling. Possibly this is just the entity distorting her somehow, or maybe it depicts her burnt, as she was burnt to death. It's unclear, but I imagine it's more than likely just a normal portrait, as the twins don't appear to be disloyal in any form, and wouldn't need the entity to threaten them. The image of their mother likely incites anger, reminding them of her death, but also the resulting suffering caused when left without her. This would be mixed with being reminded of her in a good way too though, I imagine. The iridescent lament configuration is quite simply a gift, described as a lament configuration moulded from the fog itself. It may even be a peace offering of sorts. It's essentially a replica of the original box, but with new powers. This is actually quite interesting, because this means that canonically, the entity can straight up form things like the lament configuration, with use of its fog, the box being a very powerful item. The iridescent feather is described as a glass-like feather, moulded from the fog itself. It then states it is simple, yet a symbol of those who watch over Carmina. This I think is meant to simply be a gift, but also a means to draw emotion from Carmina. Crows, while saving her, also killed her friends, which completely destroyed her. So this glass-like feather is going to incite quite a clash of emotions, which I imagine is what the entity wants. Okay, moving on from the iridescent named ones. Bloody Coil is simply a coil used in the trapper's bear traps, that is covered in blood. It could possibly be the spring that remains after catching the bear, 
used for his mask. Or potentially it was used on his father, as we know Evan killed him, so potentially he trapped him before he was taken to the warehouse's basement. Either way, this blood likely holds some emotional significance to Evan, and is why it's imbued with a certain power. All-seeing spirit is described as the Kra Frabai symbol, which represents the entity watching over us. The symbol itself appears on the head of the bell. I presume this is meant to represent the inescapable grasp of the entity that the Wraith experienced firsthand. It's to remind him that he too cannot escape its evil, and is being watched over, whilst also empowering him. The coxcomb clapper is described as a bell clapper, with a simple knotted rope wrapped around it to muffle the sound, a malevolent aura emanating from it. Potentially this is a modification made by Philip himself, possibly learned from his home in Nigeria, and potentially even his father. The power of the silent bell likely comes from his lack of ringing the bell to warn his village before it was attacked, the silence being almost an equivalent of it not being rung to warn them. That guilt and memory likely fuels Wraith in the trials. Apex Muffler is described as a masterfully crafted chainsaw muffler that outperforms all others. This is likely special as it was probably constructed by Billy himself, based on the perk Tinkerer. This may also represent the freedom he received upon his escape. The iridescent brick on the other hand represents his confinement. We can actually see this exact brick in the Tome 5 trailer, described in the flavour text as the first brick to fall when his room's barricade came crashing down. He was locked in a dark room by his parents for all his life, until he broke out and killed them as an adult. The carburetor tuning guide is a similar thing to the Apex Muffler. It's basically just a literal improvement to Bubba's chainsaw, with directions to properly adjust and tune the chainsaw's carburetor. It's possible Bubba made these directions himself, or they were a gift from the entity. Matchbox is an interesting add-on. Described as a matchbox containing an odd collection of mismatched buttons, serves as a reminder of a horrible place. The lack of matches actually in the box is likely to signify Sally's burning down of Crotus Pran, and also a reminder of her time there. The collection of buttons is uncertain, but possibly she took a button off of each of her victims, as a trophy of sorts. The torn bookmark is a very curious add-on. It's described as a white and pristine piece of ribbon, once attached to a sacred book. Serves as the symbol of a dispute. Now, this I actually believe to be a bookmark, possibly from a Bible, after Sally visited Father Campbell's chapel and killed Father Campbell in the confessional, mentioned in its law tab. I assume it was torn in the struggle. The soldier's putty is an item from one of the soldiers that Anna killed after they entered onto her land in the Red Forest. It doesn't seem like there's anything particularly special about this one. I think it's meant to simply represent the dislike Huntress had to people coming into her land. It's meant to resurface that anger and frustration to be used in the trials. Interestingly, both of the shape's add-ons, Fragrant Tuft of Hair and Judith's Tombstone, seem to reference his sister, Judith. This is interesting because potentially these are the only two things that hold emotional value to the otherwise emotionless shape, and with the realm of the entity powered off of emotions, bestows him with considerable power. Judith, of course, was the first person Michael killed during 1963. When he returns to Haddonfield in 1978, he moves her headstone from her grave and places it onto someone's bed, after killing another similar-aged woman. The tuft of hair is quite possibly from one of Laurie's friends, who were killed in the 1978 film, and not Judith. I tried to find a scene where hair was pulled, <laughs> but I couldn't find it, so let me know whose hair you think this is. <laughs> Both the mint rag and waterlogged shoe for the hag are in reference to the day in which she was captured by cannibals, which was probably the biggest turning point of her life. The mint rag is a torn piece of her dress that she was wearing the day she disappeared. Then oddly, the waterlogged shoe is described as a child's shoe long lost in the bog's waters. I presume this is meant to be a shoe from another child in Lisa's village, potentially just showing how many people have fallen victim to the cannibals before Lisa killed them. Both, though, hold emotional value. The iridescent flesh is said to be a thin slice of smooth young flesh. The veins shimmer with luminescent glow, as if life still flows within. First off, creepy. <laughs> 
Second, this is presumably one of Bubba's victims in the original film. This most likely is from Pam Jones, based on the quote at the bottom, who's the character who got grabbed by Bubba and placed on a meat hook after going inside Bubba's house. I can only imagine this is here to essentially encourage him to take similar action in the trials. The black box is taken directly from A Nightmare on Elm Street. This box is essentially the focal point of a revelatory moment where Quentin and Nancy find evidence of Freddy's prior abuse to them as children, that they otherwise hadn't believed up to that point. The red paintbrush is also from this same scene. It's inside Freddy's crawl space area. The red paintbrush was used by a young Nancy to paint the walls inside of Freddy's secret room, shown in a flashback. Both of these items are used in the film to remind the two of what Freddy did, with a lot of emotion coming from this scene. Amanda's letter was a letter used to blackmail Amanda. It held the revelation that Amanda had been involved in the death of John Kramer's unborn child. This essentially leads to her death, and her failing of John. This letter is likely here purely for the emotional weight it holds, also to remind Amanda of what she did, but equally what she still has to prove, as she believes the realm is all part of John's plan. The videotape is said to be a tape that contains a recording of Jigsaw, explaining the rules of a game to Amanda. This is referring to the original game she was in, in which she had a reverse bear trap on her head. It mentions that the tape lets her reminisce, and hardens her determination. Both the redhead's pinky finger and Tattoo's middle finger are quite simple, being the two trophies of the clown's favourite victims, both described in their flavour text as prized. Who these people are, it isn't clear. The Kintsugi teacup I believe is meant to be a gift from the entity. Potentially originally the cup was broken after Rin was attacked by her father. It has now been repaired with powdered gold. The purpose of Kintsugi is to highlight the imperfections of something, so I presume this cup is almost representative of the spirit with her also being repaired by the Entity. After being cut to pieces, she's repaired to what the Entity believes is a more perfect state than her prior look. So it's like a wholesome Entity moment, just with some pretty creepy and dark undertones. <laughs> Her other add-on, the mother-daughter ring, is seemingly a gift Rin received from her mother. It's made of silver and engraved with the words, For my precious daughter. We know that Rin had a good relationship with her mother, and her mother would protect her from her father when he was angry. This ring, therefore, likely reminds her of the good of her mother, but also how it was all taken away by her father. The Legion's fuming mixtape appears to be a combination of all the other mixtapes into one. It takes the words and descriptions from Frank's, Julie's, Joey's, and Susie's, and has them all describe the fuming mixtape. The tape seems to possibly be a gift from the entity, as it says it provides the listener with a sixth sense, and contains vocals from another world, so possibly the entity laying down some absolute insane verses to the Legion's favourite music. <laughs> Black incense is described as a dark paste made of sharp osseous shavings, which sharpens the mind's eye. Osseous means something that consists of bone, so this particular incense is made up of bone shavings. Who these shavings are from, we can only speculate. Possibly, to be really dark, we can assume someone like her barn, her old mentor. Possibly the bone of those who had died from the plague? Really, it's unclear. But hey, super gross that she's inhaling bones. The outdoor security camera and Ghostface caught on tape are both add-ons that reference the moment Ghostface was first spotted in Roseville. The camera caught a glimpse of Ghostface entering a house on Bellevue Road in northern Roseville, at an angle where he could be seen, but no clues could be gathered to lead to his arrest. The tape that this footage was held on was then collected by Jed Olson, who took the tape and wrote his first article on the Ghostface, or himself really. These two add-ons essentially are the start of the Ghostface legend in Roseville. Both the Leprous Lichen and Red Moss are both organic growths that originate from the Upside Down. These, I presume, are simply to hone the Demogorgon's power. Having organic matter from its own realm undoubtedly empowers it. The Lichen and Moss in particular may be powerful, as it's the most prevalent throughout the Upside Down, when seen in the show, covering almost every surface. Renjiro's bloody glove is the glove worn by Kazan's father, Renjiro, during their fight. The blood coming 
coming from the glove being placed over the wound, which Kazan inflicted, killing Renjiro. This is representative of Kazan going too far, basically, reaching the point where his goal to preserve his family's legacy has now actively and literally hurt his family. It's the point of no return in a sense, and the glove likely fills Kazan with great anger. Hellshire Iron depicts the branding iron used by the Hellshire gang. It wasn't used on the gang itself, but instead burnt into captured bounties, presumably to spread fear around the gang itself. This acts as a reminder of those days invigorating Deathslinger to apply a similar ruthlessness to his trials. The iridescent seal of Metatron, I believe, is meant to partly be a gift. It's a symbol seen throughout Silent Hill, said to have protective magical properties, and can also be seen in Cheryl's perk, Soul Guard. The angel Voltiel, who Pyramid Head served, had the seal tattooed onto him in two places. Therefore, it's likely a reminder of who he serves, and now with it reformed by the fog, who his new overlord is. So this is possibly a threat, with the entity potentially being fearful of the executioner, or maybe a gift in hopes of agreement between them. The obsidian goblet is a blessed item of the cult, the Order. It was used for different rituals, including rebirth rituals. Within Silent Hill 2, it unlocked a special ending, known as the Rebirth Ending. During this ending, James Sunderland attempts to revive his dead wife. This likely holds emotional power with Pyramid Head representing James's inner torment over this event. Compound 33 is described as Talbot's penultimate serum. It didn't let him escape, likely in reference to the Void, but it did have powerful effects. So, simply a reminder of his days in the Void, and also the strength of a special and powerful serum he concocted whilst there. The silencing cloth is meaningful, as it was the cloth used to keep Charlotte quiet in the early days of the desires being hunted. It was placed into her mouth to stop her from screaming. A reminder of those days is likely pretty traumatizing for Charlotte, particularly as it was around the time both Madeline and Victor died. Death Row's compilation is basically what it sounds like. It's a compilation of the screams of Trickster's victims, and placed onto a vinyl. A bit like Doctor's add-ons with all his files and such. This is basically Trickster's version of that, but compressed into a single add-on. A reminder of the work he did, to compel him. Both of the add-ons for Nemesis are quite interesting, as they're almost reminders of his goal. The Iridescent Umbrella Badge and Shattered Stars Badge. The Umbrella Badge reminds him of his creators, and therefore his loyalty. With its new iridescent finish, I suppose he is being reminded of his new loyalty to the entity. The Stars Badge is a reminder of his goal, and likely to encourage his success in it. Kill Stars was of course his initial order. Possibly the Shattered Stars Badge is an encouragement to now move beyond that. He's broken stars, time to move on to the trials. Engineer's Fang is taken from the Engineer, a creature from the Labyrinth. After Kirsty Cotton interacts with the Lament configuration, she sees the Engineer. Upon solving it, she closes the Labyrinth off, but also summons Pinhead and the other Cenobites for the first time. Presumably, this physical tie to the Labyrinth empowers Pinhead as something from his own realm. The Garden of Rot is a nude self-portrait by the artist, and depicts a rotting darkness growing outward from within. This is interesting and suggests almost that Komina was aware of the entity's corruption prior to getting taken, or it is simply an interpretation of her tragedy and inner guilt and torment slowly consuming her. The artistic depiction of her being consumed by darkness likely compels her in the trials. The iridescent videotape and remote control are both in reference to the cursing and sharing of Sadako's tape. The iridescent videotape is said to be the original tape that was cursed, watched by both Ryuji and Raiko. The remote control is what's used to play the tape within the cabin. Alright, well, that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed, and be sure to drop any additions or thoughts you have down below. Thanks, and goodbye.